kick off with Sam from the Telegraph. Hi. Hello, okay. um, talking about your connection to England, how big a factor was that when you almost played for England or tried to? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about that the other day. I was actually talking to Edu about that uh, at lunch, and uh, yeah, I would have done it. Yes. So that was Capello. Yeah, and he, I, he contacted you. And yeah, and I, and I and I would have done it. Yeah, I felt very proud about it, and uh, I was very realistic looking at the place that Spain had at the time, how little chances <laughs> I had. So uh, you need to know your level. That's very important. Look in the mirror and. Uh, and at the end, it didn't happen. Um, and it was good, at least to think about it. Yeah. Were you sort of disappointed, upset? Did you try and fight that? Were we living anyway? Sorry, sorry? When it couldn't happen. Yeah. Friday's down the FIFA basically said. No, but it's okay. You cannot do it, you cannot do it. That's it. That's fine. I mean, it wasn't sort of a, a big ambition as last and you weren't totally devastated. No, I wasn't prepared to fight against the world in that <laughs> moment. <laughs> Jordan? Um, four of the first six games of the season were away from home. Um, the next ten games, you have seven away games. How much mental work do you do with the team, with the club, to ensure that these days um, do not affect you, these periods of being away from home for so long? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we discuss and we put things in place to, especially to to make the players feel fresh, you know, because there's a lot of travelling, there's a lot of requirements are all routines and habits have become a bit uh, different but uh, yeah they've just been 10 days away from home most of them as well you know in hotels and playing international football so they're quite used to it uh, the thing is when you glide those two things together and then the, the days becomes uh, a big proportion of, of certain periods and become more challenging but so far we are still very early in the season the team is, is fresh. What do you do to keep them fresh? Well, try to make those uh, periods as short as possible, as efficient as possible, obviously respecting the priority always, that is, is performance, that is preparation, and that is rest and recovery. So if we have to bring them back uh, straight away after match is perfect, if the best thing is to stay in the hotels and try the following day to have better sleep, uh, better food, uh, better time to recover and prepare the next match, they have to understand. And then we always do certain activities within the squad to keep it fresh, to keep it a bit of a surprise and, and a bit of um, something a little bit out of the norms, basically. Any examples of what you've done? No, <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> and just finally, um, and you've done a lot of work to kind of make away days feel like home, like, you know, we're putting slogans in the dressing room and try and make it real, really feel like home. There was a period when Arsenal really, really struggled away from home, but that isn't the case anymore. Do you feel like you can now go on away days so you don't fear it or dread it as much as maybe you used to? Well, we, we tried to prepare the best possible way and obviously uh, the results that uh, we had in the last two seasons, especially away from home, it's, it's reassuring, it brings confidence, it brings trust to the to the team that we are capable of competing in in any scenario and, uh, and that's, in my opinion, very, very important for ourselves and as well for the opponent because they can see that uh, that we are ready to to face to face. Okay, yes, Sam? I'm a cup. Hi. Over the summer, there's quite a bit of excitement so, around Gabriel Jesus and the return of him obviously being fully fit and, um, and the rest of the distracted <coughs> situation. Yeah. What we made of the start of the season, and do you think there's a bit more to come from him? Because it seemed against Alonson, he wasn't fully. Um, well, as I said, uh, he came on in a, in a great shape, probably better than in the best condition he's been uh, with us. He was flying in pre-season and unfortunately he got that injury straight away. That affected him for a few weeks. He put again a lot of work into it uh, to come back, and now he needs to get the rhythm. You know, he's playing a few games. He started two games already against Atalanta and Bolton. He's common uh, and against uh, Southampton. Sorry. Uh, so, yeah, he's there now. He needs to earn the right to play to play more. He's got our full support. He's a player can play in various positions, and he's a really important player for us. In terms of English managers uh, in this country. Looking at the pathway, is there anything more that this country needs to do in terms of producing English, English managers or do you think it's just a matter of time uh, for more country? I don't know. I think uh, I don't really know the system that well to give a, a clear opinion, but I can tell you that the, the level of English managers is really high um, and, uh, and the education of 
of the players, especially when they come into the academy, is extremely high. So that means that there is there is quality there. Is do they have the enough the enough opportunities as well? That's a question that uh, probably is not for me to answer. Gary. Hi. With um, obviously Thomas's vast experience um, at club football, would that be perhaps slightly advantageous for you when it comes to the load for some of the players who go off on the Lindy Cup? The fact he knows what it's like to be in your shoes, and therefore maybe you, you'll get a little bit more strategy, perhaps. It would be better for, for Kyle and Declan at certain points. Well, I think they, all the managers understand the demands that we have at the club level. But the reality as well is that they have the responsibility to the best for the country and, and to fulfil the duties that they have in the role, which is to win all of the games. <laughs> and, uh, and with those demands, you have to make the best decision that you, you think for the day. And it's very difficult, and I understand that, for anybody to look, OK, one month ahead, three months ahead, or looking at the previous history. Ed? Just on Jack Wilshire, um, he mentioned he's going to be a bit messy if he does go. Have you, have you made any attempts to try and keep him the to talk to him or offer him a... No, I don't know exactly where we are on, on that today. At the moment, he's here with us. We are extremely happy to have him. And, OK, what happens in the future, we can discuss it after. And just generally on your, on your players, the next international break, obviously you've got a lot of injury issues at the moment. There's a few players that sat out this international break. Do you expect more of a, uh, to do the same for the next international break, which comes in a really, really busy time? My wish will be that everybody is fit and available and they can go with the national teams and we don't have to adjust any of that. So let's see where we are in, in November. OK, last quick couple. Thanks. Mike. Now, should we be surprised that there are more Spanish coaches in the Premier League than English coaches when there are 2,000 Spanish coaches with the pro licence badge and only 200 English? And if you want, if I'm going to go and get my UA for pro licence tomorrow, good luck to your team. Um, <laughs> it would cost me £13,000, where I think in Spain it's something like €2,000. Shouldn't we be surprised that there's that imbalance in Spanish-English coaches in the Premier League? Again, very difficult for me to give you a, a proper answer because I don't know all the data and all the, the, the factors that are contributing for probably that unbalance in the numbers that, that you are describing. OK, finally, John. Um, you mentioned that the England players were smiling when I heard that Thomas Fugel. Did that include Raheem, who's out of the I don't know if Raheem was in there. <laughs> <laughs> what, what about Ben White? Did he have a specific question? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so he doesn't ask me about Bukayo or Declan. You go to... <laughs> You, we just assume that those two were happy then. <laughs> yeah, OK. Well, I assume that Thomas Tuchel would be happy with those. <laughs> <laughs> and with Russ, I think he would be very happy and probably very happy to have Ben as well. So, okay. Is it important to get Raheem up in the England side? Well, if that's his desire and what he wants, for sure. And, and he's in a, in a really good moment right now. I was watching the last few training sessions and he was exceptional. and. Uh, Brahim at his best, you know, can compete with any player in, in this league for sure. Okay, that's us. Yeah, thanks thank, you. thank you. Thank you. See you next. I've got to apply. I've got to apply.